all gamers, grab a helmet and a healing potion, because we're talking about Gloomhaven today. Do you guys notice how I always say, I'm Professor Meg, at the beginning of my videos? Like, it makes sense for the Board Venge videos, because that's a group of us, but for my own videos, do I need to say, I'm Professor Meg, when I start this? Hello gamers, welcome back to my channel, and today we are talking all about Crimson Scales. As you can tell from the title of the video, I've played five scenarios now of Crimson Scales, and I just really want to talk about it with you guys. So if you don't know, Crimson Scales is a fan-made expansion for Gloomhaven. Uh, it was made by Board Game 613 and also Addix Games. Um, and it was made with the blessing of Cephala Fair. They let him use a whole bunch of the files and things like that. Um, and also Alexandra Leachiff. Um, he did all the artwork for it, and he's also done all of the Gloomhaven artwork. He is absolutely phenomenal. You should check out all of his character renderings. Um, he does commissions pretty often, and I love getting to see all the special characters that people have in Gloomhaven. So, anyway, getting sidetracked. But, this is a fan-made expansion. So, Board Game 613 loved Gloomhaven so much, he made up a whole bunch of different classes. I want to say 11. Um, he made up different monster decks. Um, there are new monsters, monster cards, uh, and obviously like 70 scenarios that you can play through. And I've played through five so far, and they're all very unique. Um, they add different things to the game, so I just want to talk about them. Um, so I will be having another video on this channel where I go over all of the classes that are available in Crimson Scales, but I think it's very unique that when they start off the game, they have basically like different parties for you, where there's four classes that are grouped together um, and they have you choose characters based on those classes so here are like the different sections so you could get these four and these four and it kind of tells you um, the complexity rating and also what they do well uh, so let's see the one that we chose the one that we chose are explorers so our group summary is elements area of effect monster manipulation obstacle creation healing and mobility and i am really enjoying my character so far uh, so I think it's really cool how they pair it up. That way when you're starting with a new team, you know that it's balanced and you don't have to worry about things like that because that's something that can definitely happen in Gloomhaven. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed that. So I am playing as the Chain Guard. Is that his name? Oops, wrong side. Let's see. I'll just grab his card. Um, so I'm playing as the Chain Guard. Um, he is an Enox. He's very cool. He is very reminiscent of the Hatchet as well as uh, the Brute. Um, he does a lot of damage, a lot of some traps, some pulling, swinging. Uh, he has a new um, shackle mechanic where I get to shackle enemies and then they have to stay next to me and basically duke it out. Uh, I've really been loving that. Um, and then Dan is playing as the Bright Spark. The Bright Spark I've just been watching from afar, uh, seeing the things that he does, but he kind of reminds me of Tony Stark. He's like this guy that has these potions and research and he's blowing up something over here and then smacking something over there. And it it feels kind of Tony Stark-esque, um, so it's been really cool to watch. So, um, through the five scenarios, let's see. One other thing that I really appreciate is that there's a scenario flowchart. It does kind of, I don't want to say spoil things, but it kind of lets you know the direction that you're going in the game, uh, and it lets you know, you know, how certain story arcs are going. Like right now we've done five, but I can tell that this green little bubble has a six in it, so I'm guessing that after the six it's kind of like the end of that section. Um, so a little spoilery, but I like it. I, it, melts, it makes me feel like I'm on track, um, and I really, really like keeping track of things and seeing how much we have left uh, and feeling like we're progressing toward the end. Um, that's one of my favorites. So to go through the scenarios, this is going to be a little spoilery, so it's going to give you a little bit of an idea of my experience with Crimson Scales, but I am not by any means going to spoil everything. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit, a little bit of a tease how we've been enjoying it, but I'm not going to go too far. Um, so the, fir the first scenario is really fun. Um, I want to say, yeah, right off the beginning, it introduces a new monster that was made for Crimson Scales, which I thought was really cool. Um, and it also has an ability that's new. It, it's not new, it's used in a different way. I guess I'll just say it, because it's very small and it's scenario one. But the enemy has shield until its turn, and then after its turn it doesn't have shield, which I thought was really cool. Uh, it was just fun to feel something new right away. Um, and then scenario two... I want to say it was scenario two. 
Yes, scenario two did something cool with using different um, points that you have to stand on, which I also have a lot of fun with when there are puzzles in Gloomhaven that you have to stand on something to get a door to open or something to trigger. Um, so scenario one, new monsters. Scenario two, right away with using those fun pieces, you're getting to use, you know, your little uh, pressure plates um, that you don't always get to use. So that was really fun. Um, and then the third scenario, I want to say the third scenario is maybe the only one that I don't have something crazy different to remark on. Um, check out scenario three. It was a lot of fun, uh, but I want to say that's maybe the one that I just don't have something really to pull out from it. Um, so yes, uh, maybe scenario three was what caused it. I think this is what I wanted to say. I want to say scenario three gave us a branch, which is one of my favorite things in Gloomhaven when the story says, do you want to go here or there? And you have to worry about, can I get closed out? You know, do I have to worry about how soon I do certain things? Will it affect stuff? I want to say scenario three ended with, you can go here or you can go there. Um, and I didn't want to go the way we did, but we did. Um, so I guess I'm going to spoil a tiny, tiny bit more about this. Um, it's nothing too crazy and it's in the first five scenarios so I feel like this will just get you hooked on it more but at the end of the scenario we were asked to go and do something else and then we see sick soldiers and we realize that there's like a sickness or something going on and I was like nope nothing to do with that I don't want anything to do with that let's leave I don't want to be there um but we decided to help them because we're good guys I guess in this one um, so number four is called Infected Warriors. This was another really cool mechanic where there are people on your side that aren't your standees. There are other standees that are incorporated into the game and you are helping them. And Gloomhaven Proper has done that as well and it's also one of my favorite things when there are extra standees on the table that you're getting to play with and interact with that aren't really summons or monsters, but they're just extra people that get to join the fight. Um, so that was very cool and I really enjoyed that. And then, scenario five, we got to our first boss. Um, we got to have a boss fight, it was very cool. Um, it took <laughs> one of the craziest monsters in Gloomhaven with like the chunkiest points and it, they duplicate, uh, it's the oozes, um, and they gave us an ooze boss. It was really fun, uh, it felt a little overwhelming at first, it felt like it was getting too big to handle, um, and then we had some moves that made us feel really powerful, and I think that's the thing about Gloomhaven and now Crimson Scales, is that it makes you feel like a hero. You know, you, you get in those situations where you're not sure if you're even gonna get out, and then you do, and it's only because you're so magnificent um so it's it's just a really good feeling um so that is as far as we've gotten in crimson scales those five scenarios uh again i know that the sixth one will close us out in that little block so i'm really interested to see where it goes next considering we just had a boss fight i think that's also really cool um and i just hit level three so you know we're gonna be playing again soon because i have that level three card that i want to try out now so that has been my experience with Crimson Scales so far. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to continue to hear how our campaign went. I'm happy to update you guys every five or seven scenarios, but I wanna know if you wanna know the secrets or not, if you'd rather hear the beats. Let me know if I overshared and I told too many secrets or if you'd rather hear a few little more. Um, Cause I'm really not sure with content like this, how much, you know, when it's a secret and it's a campaign, how much you actually want to know about it. Um, but I'm happy to show it off, and I will definitely be showing you guys all of the classes very soon. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye! And if you want a copy of Crimson Scales for yourself, you can pre-order it right now on thecrimsonscales.com. Um, they didn't ask me to make this video, but they did send me this copy, um, and it is absolutely wonderful. I do highly recommend grabbing a copy for yourself if you're a Gloomhaven player and you think you'll play through this content. It is a lot of content. It is very awesome. Um, it'll definitely satisfy you while you're waiting for Frosthaven. And that is all. I will leave you with the link below. Bye!